Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Rampant Design Tools tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to talk about two of my favorite things. I'm going to talk about the new Rampant Design Tools flash effects elements and I'm going to talk about Avid's Media Composer and Symphony. Now in this lesson what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on how to use these elements inside of your Media Composer and Symphony timeline because a few people have posted questions saying well, because these elements don't have alpha channels, I, I really can't use them. I can't get the most out of them. But you know what? With a little bit of thought, you're going to be able to drop these elements into your timeline, create your own alpha channels, and you're going to be able to reuse these elements quickly and easily so your clients are never left waiting for you to get something done. You'll have it done in no time flat. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Symphony. That's obviously a command tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Now I am working in Symphony, but the technique I'm gonna show you works the same whether you're using Symphony or Media Composer. And the other thing I'm gonna point out is that I'm not gonna use any third party plugins, anything like that to do what we're gonna do. Everything's gonna be done using the tools that we have access to right out of the box with Media Composer and Symphony. Okay, so the first thing that I'm actually gonna need here before I get in to use the flash effects elements is I'm gonna need to create a sequence with some clips in it. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a clip here at random. I think this clip is fine. I'm just gonna hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit this into a new timeline. We're just gonna select the bin that we want it to go to, which is fine, rampant design bin. I'm gonna simply say, okay. There is our clip, and what I'm gonna do is hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. We're gonna create a new layer, and let's get a flash effects element here. So what I'm gonna do is just double click through here, and let's find one that I think is gonna work well in here. But really, at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can use really any of these elements quickly and easily. This one's a nice one, I like this one here. Now the cool thing with these is these can actually be used as transitions, so you know what? I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that up. So what I'm gonna do is we'll just come down to about here. And I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark this entire clip. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on video track two and I'm simply gonna hit B to edit this clip into my timeline. Now what most people wanna do right away is they'll see something like this that doesn't have an alpha channel and they'll say, okay, I have to use a Luma key. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna hit Control and eight on Windows, Command and eight on the Mac. They're gonna navigate down to the keying section here. Let's find key, there we go. We're gonna grab Luma key, I'm gonna drag it over here, I'm gonna drop it onto the flash effects effect and you'll see right away, it doesn't really give us what we want. Now this is the effect sort of on its preset. So what I'm gonna do here is just step into the effect. We can soften this up a little bit. You know, we can adjust the gain here. It's kind of getting there, but not, not quite. We still have this black outline. It really doesn't look nice and crisp and clean as it should. Well, Luma Key is really the wrong effect to use when you want to do what we're attempting to do. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to create an actual mat for this element. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard. Now F5 is my shortcut to remove effect. If you don't have F5 mapped as your shortcut to remove effect, you can always find remove effect right here at the top of your timeline. Now what I'm gonna do, because I'm using Symphony, is I'm gonna use the Symphony, and we're gonna navigate up to Image here. There we go, inside Image. I'm gonna use the Symphony Color Correction Tool. Now the standard Media Composer Color Correction Tool is gonna work pretty similar to what I'm gonna show you right here. We could even use the standard color effect if we wanted to. But because I have access to color correction, like I said, both Symphony and Media Composer, a little bit more advanced than Symphony, but because we have access to it on both systems, we're gonna use that. And I'm not gonna use any of the color wheels or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to step into effects mode again, shift and Y is my shortcut for effects mode. If you don't have effects mode mapped, you can always find it right here in your composer window or right over here in your timeline. Now, like I said, no color wheels necessary here. What I'm gonna do is twirl down hue, saturation, lightness, and I'm simply just gonna twirl down controls and just the master controls. Now the first thing that I wanna do here is I wanna remove all the saturation from the shot. So what we're gonna do is just grab saturation and just get rid of it. There we go. Now you'll see we've really already created a mat for this element. Now if I wanna see what exactly is going on here, a couple ways I can do it. I normally just like to step in and let's just make sure I'm out of effects mode here. There we go, I can step out and I can step in and that's pretty close right there. But you see, we lose some of the information in here by just doing the simple saturation removal. So what I'm gonna do is step back into effects mode here, shift and Y, 
And what we're going to do is just make a little modification to our mat here. Now, what we're going to use to do that modification is we're going to use the gain, the gamma, and the setup. Now, what most people are accustomed to hearing when they're dealing with the brightness values of their shot is lift, gamma, and gain. Now, lift is obviously black levels, gamma is midtones, and gain is the whites. And we can see that if I come to gain right here and I just start to drag it up, you can see my whites getting even brighter. I get a bit of a hot spot in there. Now, you'll see if I step in again here, we do have that bit of a hot spot. So you'll see we've actually sort of recreated this not too bad, but I think it's a little bit too much. What we're going to do is just back off a little bit here. Just That's not too bad right there, 106. Now, you'll see that we can also get in. We can adjust the setup to darken things, but I think I actually like the way that I had it right there. We actually have a pretty fair representation in black and white that we do when we actually step into the effect, but we can obviously get in and adjust this after the fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that I'm happy with this for right now. Now, most people say, okay, well, when we've got the mat now, well, now what do we do? Well, what we need to do is we actually need to double this layer up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac to create a new layer. What I'm going to do is select my clip. I'm going to press Alt and C on Windows, Option and C for all my Mac friends to copy that element into the clipboard. There we go. And we're just going to drop this into Video Track 3, just like such. Now you'll see it tells me that there's not enough footage to make the edit, but that's okay. I just needed to mark the entire clip here, so I'll hit B now. And what I want to do is I want to remove the effect from Video Track 2 here. I'm just going to hit F5, just like such. So now what we have is on the top layer, we have our matte key, and on the bottom layer, we have our element. So now we're ready to get in and to apply the actual matte key effect. So what I'm going to do is step back up to Video Layer 3. I'm going to come back to the effects palette here. We need to find our matte key. It's actually located inside of the key section. Here it is right here, matte key. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take matte key. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to drop it right here onto the topmost layer. Now you'll see as soon as I do, we kind of got this weird vignette happening here. It's kind of actually the opposite of what I wanted. We're kind of there, but what I actually need to do is just step into this effect, and I need to come right over here, and I need to invert the key, just like such. And you'll see what we have now is we now have that flash effect almost doing exactly what we want. Now, what I wanted to show you was, you'll remember I said, we, you can see that we even got more of the flash over here as well. I said that we could actually adjust this after the fact, and we can. Because obviously, you know, creating mats is not an exact science, and you're going to want to get it pretty close and then get in and sort of tinker with it after the fact. So what I'm going to do is simply double-click on the matte key effect to step in, and you can see right there, there is my color correction effect. So what I'm going to do is hit Shift and Y, and I'm going to select that layer. And you'll see now what I can do is I can now adjust the gain, which is going to adjust what the actual effect is doing here. You'll see that's just adjusting the whites. If I adjust the gamma here, that's adjusting the midtones, and then we can also adjust the blacks as well. So you see that we can get in and tinker with this however we want. And that's looking very good right there. So you see, getting in and creating your own custom matte keys inside of Media Composer and Symphony is very easy. Now I did want to show you one more thing, the important things. So we created this for one element. Now let's say hypothetically we were really happy with the way that this matte key worked out. Well, chances are, if this matte key works for this one effect or this one element, chances are it's going to work pretty darn similar across a lot of the other elements inside of Flash Effects, inside the Flash Effects product line. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to step back into Effects Mode by hitting Shift and Y on the keyboard. Again, that's my shortcut for Effects Mode. If you don't have it mapped, it's right here, Effects Mode. It's right over here, Effects Mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that matte key element and I'm going to drag it right down here into the rampant design bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this flash effects matte key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the layer again. Again, I'm going to select the color correction effect. We're going to drag that into our bin. We'll call this flash effects color correction. Now, what I'm going to do is just close my bin here. I'll just double click on the layer here. Just to collapse everything. And I'm just going to grab another element here. It doesn't matter which one. Let's just grab this one here. Sure, it's got some pretty cool green happening here. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip. And what I'm going to do is edit it into my timeline twice. We'll put it in once right here. There we go. 
I'm going to select the entire clip here and we're going to put it onto video layer three as well, just like what we had before. So now we remember the technique. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the color correction effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it right over here onto the shot. There's our Mac key now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. We're going to drag the Mac key effect over here, drop it onto the shot, and guess what we now have? We now have that element ready to go. So you see, we now have our two go-to effects to use really any element inside of Flash Effects. Now you'll remember I said we're going to use that Flash Effects effect here, or element, as a transition. So what I'm going to do is get to this point here. I'm going to mark an endpoint. And let's just grab another element here from Motocross. Let's just grab, I don't know, this shot here. Sure, why not? Let's hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to come back here and hit Play. And what we've just done is created a cool transition and created a matte key inside of Media Composer and Symphony, really, in a matter of minutes. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that using flash effects inside of Media Composer and Symphony is very simple. It just requires a little bit of forward thinking and the power of rampant design tools to create an awesome end product to wow and amaze your clients every time. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can head on over and post them in the Rampant Design Tools forums. This is Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.